Welcome to Energy Quest. So, we're very excited today to have Max Milan Kwati, who is a, a Deputy Director for Renewables in Buipa. And our, exci our excitement is for the, for the fact that um, he wants to support, you know, that he's, he wants to help in educating on renewables, which is one of those things that um, lots of others still do not get. Okay, it's, it seems pretty common for people in our industry, but the layman out there is still trying to figure out what exactly is going on renewable. So we very much appreciate that you agree to be with us today. Thank you very much for having me, Leslie. Um, I think you are doing a wonderful job. Um, um, I like advocacy and um, I mean, one of the ways to increase adoption within the industry is advocacy and yeah. through the little little education mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. all try mm -hmm. to put our efforts to. So uh, you are equally doing a very good job. Thank uh, you. The outlook is very good. Uh, I know a lot of people watch your program. Yeah. Yes. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Max. Okay, so before we actually delve into renewables and the energy transition and all that, um, can, can you tell us a bit about yourself? You need to know who is in our seat today. Well, okay, so um, I started, uh, Maximilian started a career uh, in engineering. Okay. Um, I'm a civil engineer, I mean a professional civil engineer with the Ghana Institution of Engine Engineering, and, uh, but I have a passion for energy, so I worked as a municipal environmental engineer for Boise um, mm -hmm. during my early stages of my career, and um, uh, after having the, an MBA in green energy and sustainable businesses, I decided to um, have a direct turn into energy. Uh, I've worked with a private side. Um, with a solar PV manufacturing company here in Ghana, in Tema, as a managing director. Okay. Uh, I've equally um, worked as the, I mean, I was fortunate to work as the advisor to the current Minister of Energy on Renewable Energy as his technical advisor. Okay. And I'm currently with the Buipa Authority as mm -hmm. a deputy director, also looking at renewables. Mm -hmm. So I have a strong passion for yeah. the industry. And, and a beautiful journey at that. Yeah. yeah um, we are trying our best, but yeah. God has been yeah. good. Yes, thank you yes, for that. Yes, I, I, I can see that. Yes. So very often when we hear about the transition, mostly is often about foreign entities. We hear more on what other countries in the West are doing. And a lot of us ask, where's Ghana on this, you know? What's our plan for the energy transition? And we find you the perfect person to allow our viewers to understand that we are in there as well as a country. So what's the whole energy transition about, first of all? Then we skew down to Ghana. All right, thank you. So, um, Leslie, the transition is essentially, uh, it's more like uh, a viable pathway onto a certain target. Uh, if you look at all the narratives um, that you reference that the international I mean, organizations or international I mean, platforms are talking about, they all have uh, certain pathways that they are looking to achieve a certain target. So, okay. for example, the, in the Ghanaian context, we are having uh, the narrative with energy transition is to transition our energy sector mm -hmm. towards a net zero at a certain date with a certain target. And our target is to have um, a net zero economy. Um, essentially, what that means is to calculate our emissions. We are still going to do activities that are going to contribute to mm -hmm. our emissions. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the interventions and other mitigations that are going to negate mm -hmm. those um, actions in the energy sector such that you have a net zero um, economy? And okay. so um, Ghana has equally ratified other international protocols. For us, the motivation to do this transition from the government is to do it because whatever we do, we are still going to have an economy that is going to be influenced by um, other transition programs from other All countries. All over the world, yeah. So we need to prepare equally for the various sectors that we are going to see tangibles in terms of the transition activities that they are going to do. 
When we talk about net zero, uh, net zero essentially, essentially means um, what are some of the things, so in terms of uh, energy sector, what are, what are some of the policies, the programs, the strategies that we are trying to do to negate whatever emissions we are having. So within the energy sector, uh, there are a lot of things that um, currently are being done to increase emissions. And what are some of the programs, the policies, and some of the strategies that we are doing to negate whatever thing that we are currently doing? So in the modeling of the energy transition, um, we, we had scenarios one of the scenario is BAU. The BAU is essentially the business as usual. The business as usual is what are we doing as a country now that is contributing to emissions? And what is the transition pathway that we want to adhere to? What are some of the things that we are going to do that is going to negate the emissions for us to eventually have uh, a net zero emission. So the net zero term essentially means netting, netting to zero the emissions that we are having into the industry. Whatever Ghana does, we are still going to be impacted with the uh, effects of transition because all over us, it's, it's more like a global phenomenon that is going on. So all over us, people are playing roles into the transition. And as we have uh, ratified a lot of these international protocols, i.e. the COP, uh, we've ratified uh, the COP. We've also um, subscribed to the SDGs. Uh, and SDG 7, for example, is looking at energy access and sustainable um, energy. And equally, we've ratified the Paris Agreement, which is much more on um, the climate change agenda. The COP is having a commitment into uh, green energy investment. So with all these things that we, we've um, ratified into, it is need, it is showing our moral commitment. It is need that we go by the tenets of all these uh, international protocols that we've subscribed to. There are a lot of things that uh, comes with committing to this. So uh, basically, we have our commitment into this. And in terms of the benefits, the transition that we are having now to have a net zero by 2070 comes with a lot of benefits, i.e. Uh, a lot of the clean projects that we are having currently will be able to let us have extra revenue by entering the carbon market. There will be additional job because there is a new scale being developed into a new energy industry. We are going to have um, health and safety. I mean, we are, the environment is going to be improved. And so um, in terms of breathing, other uh, health-related issues from carbon uh, emissions, uh, we are going to have the environment to be more cleaner. That is equally another benefit. In terms of diversification of our energy, uh, there is uh, an old adage that goes that you don't put all your eggs into one basket. And so when we have um, the solar giving us energy, when we have the wind giving us energy, when we have tidal, when we have all the other clean energy or other alternative energy giving us, I mean, all this, we are going to have a diversification of our energy resources. And so energy security itself um, is well assured. And finally, um, the availability. A lot of these um, resources um, are going to be available, I mean, in its chunk. And availability also ends in very competitive uh, energy rate, which will be affordable or very competitive to the citizenry. So these are some of the benefits that we have with the transition. At the moment, um, we, we've just built a framework uh, which defines a lot of, um, the framework has defined a lot of policy areas 
with programs and strategies that we are going to um, have with the energy transition. There is a policy area around decarbonization. There is a policy area around um, energy access. There is a policy around um, cross-cutting that cuts across other areas. And also um, there is a policy on energy efficiency. All these contribute to various sections or various parts of the uh, whole agenda. Energy efficiency, for example, if you are very efficient on, on energy use, at the end of the day, the sources that are even emitting CO2, for example, you are going to reduce a lot of our dependency on it. Decarbonization proposes a lot of um, other programs and other strategies that are going to let the country or a lot of our focus on the energy side focus so much on clean energy. So, for example, if the government wants to sign a new contract um, to the grid, the preferred option will much more be on an energy source that is clean and that uh, emits either zero or very little um, CO2. In terms of energy access, the focus is not going to just be on grid extension. We are going to have other models like mini grids that are clean, and that will even uh, help uh, with the access rate that the country is even having. And so we have other clean um, sources that are scalable and that are easily um, able, able to be deployed. Cross-cutting, example is why I'm here. Uh, we have to share um, what we are doing, what the country is doing in terms of this whole transition. We have to let people understand this whole mantra of energy transition, uh, net zero, everything related to it. Um, we have to get it into the media space. We have to get it into other bodies, the, the, the churches, our religious organizations, um, the ordinary market women, the youth, uh, some of whom are watching us, and, and, and of course, whatever you are also doing. So in terms of cross-cutting, the, these are also other ways that we are trying to push the transition through so that everybody will get to understand uh, this whole uh, scope of engagement. Since the transition is, um, is now just about starting, even though a lot of the programs that we previously had uh, is in a way contributing to the transition. So in our modeling, for example, I mentioned that we have the business as usual case, that is the base case. Then we had other scenarios in terms of the forecasting that we are looking at. And so we all know that um, um, these kind of uh, uh, um, agenda will require both the technical and the financial. In, in terms of financial, we foresee, the challenges that we foresee is um, we are looking at a $562 billion investment by the 2070 agenda to have a net zero. And so what we foresee is um, a key challenge with financing. And that, that means that we have to now start to look at the various strategies, delve into a lot of research that is going to help the country or help the, the whole nation to be able to get that investment. And so now research has started because we are now going to implement these um, policies and programs. So research has started to delve into um, good financing to ensure a just transition. The Bible even makes us to understand that if you are building, uh, you need to see the cost of whatever you are looking at building before you even start the project. And so before we uh, push the implementation in full force, we just launched the framework last year. Before the transition is put in full force, um, a lot of work have already started in terms of how we are going to get financing, which is a key parameter to 
are having all this, the kind of investments that are coming in, um, how bankable are these investments, what are some of the moral commitments um, into uh, having this kind of um, investment? Is this investment having an ESG focus, that's environmental, social, and governance principles? So we are looking at all this in totality uh, because now the world, the investment of the world is moving with the principles of responsible investment and all these things have the um, climate, uh, climate change agenda as their bottom line. So uh, the team and um, um, the policy makers are hugely focusing on the financing part. When it comes to the technical part, uh, already in terms of technology, um, the, the industry is well exposed to, when you come to the power generation side, the industry is well exposed to um, the various technologies that are coming in in terms of energy generation. And so um, the, the skills are, are being upgraded in terms of players, the engineers and uh, the team that are driving these, in terms of academia, where research is focusing on other technical capabilities, um, the policy recommends that we have that integration. We have an industry-focused uh, academic programs that the universities will have in training the uh, the team that is coming out as engineers, as um, um, economists, as finance people, and so all these things. Um, as we are starting the implementation, all these things work have started, conversations have started to be able to resolve these foreseeable challenges that the transition uh, hopes to encounter.